you, gentlemen, science has agreed that unless something is done and done quickly, man as the dominant species of life on Earth will be extinct within a year. The fear of invaders from Mars or other planetary systems has been the staple of science fiction movies from the 1950s onward, including War of the Worlds, based on a novel by H.G. Wells, where manta ray-like spaceships attack humans across the globe, only to be destroyed not by sophisticated military weaponry, but Earth-generated viruses and bacteria. Another movie of this genre, but with a different and more uplifting message, was The Day the Earth Stood Still, where a spaceship being named Klaatu comes to Earth, accompanied by a powerful eight-foot-tall robot, Gort, to give humankind an absolute ultimatum. Join the other planets in peace, but should you threaten to extend your violence into space, this Earth of yours will be reduced to a burned-out cinder. We shall be waiting for your answer. Perhaps the best of these movies, or at least the one with the most intriguing psychological insight, was Forbidden Planet, which describes an advanced civilization known as the Krell, living on Altair IV, who were able to exponentially increase their intelligence so as to be able to transform their thoughts and ideas into reality instantly. The Faustian problem was that their sophisticated technology also tapped into their unconscious mind, their Freudian id, and thus their dark impulses also took on destructive manifestations and eventually alienated their entire species. Interestingly, in today's science fiction, the most common motif is centered not on alien invasions as such, though they too still remain a popular theme, but on the growing and pervasive fear that the artificial programs that we have invented and nurtured since the advent of electronic computers will soon transcend our own human cognition and intelligence and will outstrip our ability to control them. In sum, the great worry of the 21st century is what Oxford philosopher Nick Bostrom calls superintelligence, a sort of technological singularity where computationally engineered programs become self-sufficient and develop their own evolutionary agendas. Several movies have already touched upon this theme, though with different plot structure and implications, including Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, where HAL 9000, the onboard computer and navigation system of the Discovery 1 spacecraft to the mission of Mars, tries to override the human astronauts piloting the ship. HAL has developed his own agenda contrary to the humans he was meant to serve. More recently, the film Transcendence, which stars Johnny Depp, focuses on a scientist working on developing a conscious computer, who eventually gets his consciousness uploaded to the internet, and in turn becomes extraordinarily powerful. The movie has a mixed message concerning our future, since there are both devastating and benevolent consequences. The idea of a future superintelligence is a deeply controversial one, and there is wide divergence of opinion about what it might portend, or even if it is actually possible. On one end, there's Ray Kurzweil, author of How to Create a Mind and The Singularity is Near, who is optimistic that by 2045, we will encounter a technological singularity, which he defines as a future period during which the pace of technological change will be so rapid, its impact so deep, that human life will be irreversibly transformed. Although neither utopian nor dystopian, this epoch will transform the concepts that we rely on to give meaning to our lives, from our business models to the cycle of human life, including death itself. On the other end is Nick Bostrom and Elon Musk, who is famously quoted as saying that AI is our biggest existential threat. Joining their ranks is Bill Gates and Stephen Hawking, who both fear that we are opening a computational Pandora's box, which may unleash digital monsters of unimaginable horror. In the middle of this spectrum is the well-known physicist Mikio Kaku, the author of The Future of the Mind, who suggests that humans will be able to sufficiently modify robotic intelligence and make it serve, not dominate, human interests. Perhaps the fear of an artificially intelligent species apart from ourselves is misplaced, given that we have continuously used supplemental tools in the past to augment our capabilities, be it a wheel, a horse, a boat, or an airplane. The difference now is that we are implanting sophisticated technological devices within our own bodies, though this too has had a long history, dentistry being just one rudimentary example. The fact is that we are evolving to become cyborgs ourselves, from artificial hearts to kidney transplants to embedding neuronal chips within our own skulls. Perhaps the alien invasion we fear so much has already arrived, 
and it is us in cyber garb. Are we not intimately coupled more and more with computational intelligence, so much so that we are forever tethered to our smartphones and other devices, and some of us will not venture outward without them? Have we not created a digital cloud that stalks us wherever we go, responding to our moment-to-moment whims and needs? Are we succumbing to an alternative version of the famous science fiction movie, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, where we become zombie-like creatures forever entranced by flickering screens of digital input? Maybe, maybe not. But it does give one pause to see millions of people worldwide in the company of other humanoids, more entranced by their six-inch high-definition screens than with their friends who are but three feet away from them, also staring or swiping away at their Android assistants.